I'm gonna try to learn Cantonese in seven days. Why? Because I wanna prove myself wrong. You see, I'm from a Cantonese speaking family, but being born and raised in Canada, I've always struggled to speak the language. Throughout the years, I've tried my best to learn it. I even flew to Hong Kong in hopes I could absorb it there. I eventually gave up on learning Cantonese because I believed that I could never become fluent in it. But recently, I've been watching other YouTubers learn languages quickly, and I thought to myself, what if I attempt to learn Cantonese again? So for the next seven days, I'm gonna try to learn Cantonese with efficient language learning techniques. And at the end of the video, I'm gonna test my Cantonese with my mom and see if I can get through an entire conversation with her with only Cantonese. It's day one of learning Cantonese and here is the plan. I have found the 500 most commonly used words in Cantonese and for two to four hours each day, I'll be studying them and trying to memorize as many as I can. I will not be learning how to read and write these words because that would take forever. I'll just be learning how to say them through Yutping, which is a romanization system for Cantonese. So unlike other YouTubers who have done challenges like this one, I am not a polyglot. I have no experience in learning lots of languages quickly. All I really know is English and a little bit of Cantonese. Yes, I'm not completely starting from scratch, but I am far from being fluent. I'd say my skill level is around grade one in Chinese school. If you saw my Hong Kong travel videos, you know what I'm talking about. Let me give you an example right now. Leho, Daga, No Gyu Jensen, No Yiga Gong Gan Gong Dong Wa, No Jong Yi Sik Bolo Bao, No Hei Mong Lei Dei, Ho Yi Gam Go Subscribe Button, Hit the Bell Icon, and like this video. <laughs> a common problem that I have is that my mind always just blanks out because I just don't know the word for things. I also just speak in fragments. It's never smooth. And so I really hope that in these next seven days, I get to fill in those gaps in my head. It's day two and I feel like I'm off to a pretty good start. The plan for today is to continue going down the word list, but to also engage in other learning mediums. I started watching Cantonese YouTubers and clips from Hong Kong movies with subtitles. And I think this is a really great way to practice comprehension and learn pronunciation. I also think video and film is a little bit more fun and entertaining compared to reading a list of words. Day three, things are still going pretty well, but I'm starting to feel a little pressure because Cantonese is a hard language. If you don't know, Cantonese is a tonal language and has six different tones. In comparison, Mandarin has four tones and English has zero. What makes Cantonese even more complicated is that no one really writes Cantonese the way it is spoken. Let's say you wanna write, he eats rice. In a normal conversation, you'd say, koi sik fai. And you can totally write those words down. But usually, people write in standard Chinese. So instead of koi sik fan, you'd write ta hek fan, which means the exact same thing. But if you were to say ta hek fan on the streets of Hong Kong, people would look at you funny. Now, if I'm not learning how to read or write in Cantonese, why does this matter? Because of music. Just like film, music is usually another great medium to learn languages from. But it's a little weird with Cantonese music. Many Cantonese songs are written in standard Chinese. So although they're technically singing in Cantonese, it's this poetic standard Chinese Cantonese with words that no one would really say in ordinary conversation. And when you're trying to learn how to speak from these songs, it's not really what you're looking for. I'll still be jamming to Cantonese music, but I don't expect I'll be learning as much from it compared to watching movies or studying the word list. It's day four and I'm not gonna lie, I've been having some difficulty. Trying to just keep up with the amount of words there are and the amount of particles and tones and slang. I feel like I'm not gonna be able to learn Cantonese fast enough to have a proper conversation with my mom. And I think that sucks. I just don't want the conversation to be just me pausing every two seconds and then relying on Chinglish. I think I'm in the dip right now. If you don't know what the dip is, let me explain to you the concept. Whenever we learn a new language or skill, we're likely destined to face the dip. The dip is the long slog between starting a skill and mastering it. This is the point when you feel the least motivation and the most frustration. The dip is when most of us decide to quit because we don't see the progress or results that we want to see. But if we're able to push through the dip, embrace the hardships and really focus on the end goal, we will eventually move past it and we will eventually see the results that we're looking for. It's day five, still grinding away, and I've realized that I've kind of been memorizing words wrong. My initial memorization strategy was just to read and repeat words out loud, and it's definitely not the most efficient technique. I've started to implement two memorization techniques that are often recommended to language learners. The first technique is association, which is when you break down the sound of a word you're learning and associate it with other words or ideas you are familiar with. Take for example, the word explain. In Cantonese, it is guy sick. Now in English, that kind of sounds like the words guy sick. So to help me memorize the word, I think of a guy who's sick. Association often naturally leads to visualization, which is when you visualize an image in your head of that association to build an even stronger mental connection. 
It's day six and let's talk about immersion. When learning a language, I believe it's really important to immerse yourself in that language as much as possible. That doesn't mean to just consume a lot of content in that language though. You'll also need to produce, produce speech, produce thoughts. This sounds really obvious, but for the longest time, I didn't understand why I couldn't speak Cantonese fluently, even though I grew up in a Cantonese family. My theory is that because my parents are pretty good at English, unlike other immigrant parents, I could always reply to them in English and therefore I never needed to to speak or think in Cantonese. There was an imbalance. Thinking back to my time in Hong Kong, I felt like I was truly immersed in the language. I was not only forced to listen to it, but I was forced to speak it, think with it. By the end of the week, my Cantonese honestly improved. With that insight, I've been approaching Cantonese this week by speaking to myself out loud, as well as to my parents. I've also been trying to actively think in Cantonese. All this has been a little bit awkward, but I think it has really helped me immerse myself in the language at home. It's day seven. I've just finished my final study session. Tomorrow, I'm having my full Cantonese conversation with my mom. I'm kind of nervous on how it's gonna go, but I think no matter what the outcome is, I'm really proud of myself for taking on this challenge. This is a bit personal, but for the majority of my life, I felt ashamed for not being fluent in Cantonese. There's something to do with Asian culture and how people, whether they know you or not, love to shame you for not knowing your native language. This doesn't include everyone, of course, and I know that a lot of times it's out of care and love. It really is, because they just want to encourage you to be more connected with your ethnic culture. But these comments have often just made me feel embarrassed every time I attempted to speak it. And so, I didn't. I used to believe that it was too late for me to learn Cantonese, that something was wrong with me. This challenge has proved me wrong. It has shown me that no, it is not too late for me to learn Cantonese or any language for that matter. And no, there is nothing wrong with me. There was just something wrong about my past approach. It is never too late to learn a language. As long as you have the proper strategies, tools, and resources, you'll be able to learn it. And with the internet nowadays, everyone has access to those. With that, there's only one thing left to do. Let me introduce you to my mom. Hello, 大家好,我是Jensen的妈妈 全部說廣東話的 那時候我們在小學的時候 啊,講廣東話的,但是我同佢哋講廣東話,佢哋覺得好奇怪,因為我哋係你哋係講英文。<笑> 是的,不會,我相信我可以學的。我祝你成功。OK,不該,OK。多謝。多謝。So, okay, <laughs> how's my Cantonese? Not completely fluent, I can tell you that. Personally, I don't think seven days is long enough to learn a language. But if I can stick with what I did this week and extend it across three months, six months, one year, in no time, I will become fluent. I'm putting this on the table right now. My New Year's resolution is to become fluent in Cantonese by the end of 2021. Hopefully, you'll see me again next year with a part two of this video. Until then, make sure to subscribe so you're notified when it comes out. Be sure to like this video if you haven't already and consider becoming a patron. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Peace.